So right off the bat, and I've been asked about this, I pull up once, twice in a story, and um, uh, during the last couple of weeks on the Any Given Training Day uh, Instagram page, someone's like, are you doing this? This challenge this year? And I'm not. And the challenge I'm referring to is the Goggins 4448. And I've got a great excuse. So roll back three years ago, we first started this podcast. It was four of us doing it. And one of those four has selfishly decided to have a 30th birthday party this weekend in the middle of what would have been the 4448. And as a good friend, I have to go to that. Otherwise, I'd definitely be doing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Is it one of those things? It's a one and done yeah. type thing. I, I think so. I think, unfor- like, not unfortunately for the, the, the event itself, it's it's self-funded, it's self-motivated, it's self-everything else, it's isolation. It is as bad as it comes. Mm. And then once you kind of do it and conquer it, you're like, I've been there. Like, it's, well, not, like, it's not like Dublin Marathon. We're just kind of doing it because we enjoy the company and the, the crowds and everything. You know, that's the draw for that, but... Like, there's only so many times you want to open Pandora's box in terms of a four by four by 48. Yeah, it's like, what's there this year? So, like, unless you're doing it for, like, with different people for a different charity or you made it harder by doing maybe a, a 10 kilo vest or, you know, I wouldn't do it because it, it, it's not my career path. But, like, if you guys did it in your for, full army attire, I mean, there was a couple people last year, there was yeah. one army group that did it last year. Yeah, yeah I know army groups have yeah. a technical term for that. And there's people listening going, you idiot but um, there was a group that did it last year for I, I you you probably know more than i did but i think they did it in the full gear and the 10k sack and everything on them um and so so for that kind of thing yes when i did it i knew it was more likely one done so i made the most of it so i had my little different events and different running routes and different things that made sense to me because so there's a number of different ways you can tackle this challenge so for for people who don't know what the 4448 is it's run four miles every four hours for 48 hours and you can't block them so you can't say i'm gonna run eight miles now and get a good night's sleep and then run uh, another eight miles it has to be four on the on the hour every four hours from there so it's not really a a staying awake challenge either like when after your 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 time is done you try and get to sleep and go from there but the way i approached it was i wanted each run to mean something so i look forward to it so i ran with different people so the first one not to blow your own horn but the first one i, I ran with yourself in the phoenix park because the phoenix park was a place where i did a lot of training from a double marathon and then running with you because you know we're running this podcast and i think everything else goes without saying on that one so that was a great start for me and then i was on to manu where i work out in clane at home with the folks uh where i ran my dad in um in newcastle where i originally grew up and it was back at the claim and um, a few runs because it was 4 a.m. because of the goggles challenge. I, I I wanted to do a few by myself as well, just because it's one of those, you know, you got to go into the hurt locker, no headphones on and try and force yourself up and at it and, and go from there. Um, and speaking of yourself, I think you gave me what felt like a month's supply of food. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of it like those that follow us last year will see the whole table of food like even the next day at work the, the girls at the boot camp are like jeez you've got a good mate there with all that food but that was almost like not to sound um not appreciative of that but and, and because of what i did that was almost a hindrance because i remember after my second run i came back and i was supposed to just have a fulfilled bar and a yogurt and go to bed and get up at uh at, at four in the morning for my third run i'm against times down a second but i was like ah it's easier to pour, throw a plate of pasta into the microwave and just i don't know why it was easier it just was easier for me to do that and have a have another meal but it was my third or fourth plate of pasta in, in the space of 24 hours i don't eat that much carbs anyway just the way i am so that fourth one, that, that third uh, 4 a.m. run, I was struggling. Like, I was getting those proper contractions in the stomach on the way back, and the waves of sweat were coming over me. And not because of the run, because it was like, you're on run three, and you're about to shit your pants. You better get back to the house as soon as you can. And you're not supposed to pace yourself out in those runs. But on the way back, I was like, I, I got to find that balance between going as fast as I can to get back to the house as soon as I could. And not fucking not not do anything to myself and have a really rough start three 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 uh, runs in but the that was time... that was when you didn't listen to the the dietary plan of when to no. eat and what to eat it yeah 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 just yeah oh clarify. yeah sorry i to clarify just oh my, my mistake 
<laughs> it was my mistake. I feel like I'm saying that a lot night, of the podcasts the lately. The middle of the night was supposed to be a little bit of granola and protein. And yeah, no, you were eating plates of pasta at four in the morning like a lunatic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you got me those um those protein yogurts and the granola. And you got you know what? I haven't used them since, but they're great. And I don't know why the the, the, the packets of grapes and stuff. And I was like, this these days they this so I was like munching on them all the time and stuff, but like the nutrition you told me what to do. I was still overwhelmed with the amount of food there. Like you had even like chicken wraps and everything for me. You know, like I think I had one of them one one of the evenings, but I learned my lesson the next night. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But <laughs> I had pace, like you could start this at any time on. So it starts for most people it starts to, uh, on the Friday. For me, honestly, the, you, you're going to have to go two, two nights anyway. I wouldn't start at 8 a.m. Friday morning because you have you have four or five runs before you're going through your first overnight kind of thing. Now, having said that, I was kind of chomping a bit all day and kind of like not anxiety, but just getting that itch. Like I need to do something, I need to do something, that kind of nervous energy. But I'm glad I started at 8, 8 p.m. the Friday because the first night, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was very manageable to keep going. And by the time I got down to Wicklow, um, I ran in Wicklow at 12 o'clock or 4 o'clock. My dad, lunatic, ran boating and with me. Um, even though he had done much running at all before that, he um, I was able to sleep during that because I knew he was going to wake me up. So it was, it was my first kind of proper fall asleep without worrying about alarms, not waking up for alarms. But um, I I did my timing started at eight o'clock because I knew it finished at four o'clock on the Sunday afternoon, and that was just a great way just to have my um, my evening. A lot of people there. It was around my kind of birthday as well. So I threw in the whole birthday thing as well as the charity and everything else and a few drinks and all the rest. And like I've said before in this podcast, half the reason I do all these events is the big session with people afterwards. I just <laughs> love that buzz. I don't think a point tastes any nicer than when you when you ran a marathon or done a mad challenge like that. Um but yeah, no, it was it was it was really I really enjoyed it, but I don't know if I'd do it again. Yeah, it's something like even watching you do it, it was just something I was like. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like it's it's not something that really appeals to me. Like I've done, like and a lot of the guys who listen are those who are in the defense force. We've done those stupid late nights where you're being woken up every two hours and then running up a hill and running down a hill and you're doing yeah. that for weeks on end. So that kind of job to you. Well, it was not anymore. But yeah, but like it was a unique thing to me. Like my first time yeah. doing this was for like. My first time running four o'clock in the morning was this challenge. Whereas you, when you're down in the current everything else, like that's like, oh, man, just join the defense yeah. forces. <laughs> and, and anyone who has done it has done that overnight, the 72 hour exercise or the two week exercise where it's living in a hole and, you know, like it's, you're eating, you're putting packets of whatever it is under your armpit because you don't want to light a fire and all that kind of crap. Mm. So, yeah, I suppose would it be easier mentally absolutely because i get to get into a bed and sleep yeah. in between it's um so it's it's not to put it down it just it's just something that never interested i would have done it with you uh to support same as the night run and art o'neill it's like i have a little bit of experience in this but mm. kind of happy for you to go figure it out yourself um and it's just one of those things that yeah i suppose when you do it to one extreme when you're when you're doing it for the kind of a challenge you're kind of like ah no <laughs> yeah. not, to, not to put it down but it was great to be watch you do it and watch mm. you go through that little bit of sleep deprivation and a little bit of hard work and but the the food element as well like and the funny thing is if, if people are trying to look back at what we did last year those calories now there was probably a little bit more but the calorific um count was exactly what you needed right in all of that food people. so when i was calculating right sean needs to eat four and a half thousand calories a day given how much he's going to run estimating your average heart rate being in zone two because you aren't going to push yourself yada yada yeah. yada and being awake for x amount of time that was calculated i, I think it was about four and a half thousand calories per day um that was including being awake and stuff so you're burning calories from just being awake you had a little bit of extra muscle i based it off your weight as well so and your height so given that i calculated right he's gonna need this with this much protein like this will have like a, like you wouldn't eat prawns or anything like that so it was like right if i get him a chicken wrap you'll eat a chicken wrap with barbecue yeah. so trying to find stuff that you would like eat was quick and easy because as soon as you finish you want to be eating something that's quick and easy yeah 
and then sleeping full belly get asleep let the body you digest while you're sleeping and you'll hopefully wake up recovered so when you were looking at the mountain of food you were like how am i going to eat all this and i was like mm. what do you mean this is what you have to eat this <laughs> so it's uh it is a bit terrifying especially it's an eye opener for well it was an eye opener for you in terms of am i actually eating enough for doing all that mm. i'm doing and what what am i actually putting into my body that's getting me through all this you know so it's it is an interesting one and the vital thing is it's person to person dependent so i put together a load of stuff for you that on paper is like this is actually perfect for you but as you realize the banana and a protein shake probably would have done you for in the morning because that's what you were used to that was what your body had been accustomed to you know it's but it is and if you are going to do a challenge like this it is a good time to experiment as well like don't go too mad i'm eating curry at four in the morning <laughs> uh, you might feel the repercussions but it's yeah it is as endurance as it gets without being vital if that makes sense you're only four kilometers away from home or figuring out the next part you know and, and a four-hour reset so it's um it was definitely yeah it was an interesting one for you it was a, there was a lot of lessons learned and you can't just rely on a lucas aid and uh whatever else for doing these kind of events yeah no if i had enough nutrition now like i felt by the second last run, the legs were starting to get at me. I was getting a bit tired and stuff. But my mood was great all the way through. It was one of the one things I was worried about. Like, I know we talked about that, that Rich Roll book um, a couple weeks ago. And it's, it's starting to annoy me now because he's he, he's doing this five-day challenge where he's doing an Ironman a day or something like that. I think it's an Ironman a day he's doing. And he's snapping at the... Now, he says it afterwards and stuff. Fairness, he's being very honest. But I'm getting annoyed at him because he's snapping at the people that are trying to help him out. And he's not having the best food and stuff. It's like oh man, these people are going well out of the way to help you. And and I hadn't read the book, but I knew of things like that. So I was afraid that people were with me, they'd see the worst of me, like on two, three hours sleep and just being just zoned out and groggy and not being fun to be around. Because because to me, and looking back on it now, it's such a fun challenge to look back on. I, I felt so nostalgic looking back on that, even weeks afterwards, looking back at the post. I did a post in each run and looking back at them, the people and running with and all the rest, I felt like, oh, it feels like it was like a lifetime ago, but it still feels pretty cool to even think about it. Like, I can't even think about it now without smiling thinking about it. Um, but, like, I was afraid I'd be snapping stuff at people because the energy with the amount of food, and I was like, all right, I better force myself to have this food. One, because I can't have you come over on a Sunday evening and see it all on the table still and not, not, not finish it. And I had extra food on top of that as well because I went down to folks in Wicklow after the, the 12 o'clock room, come back with my mom and like come back with my dad. There's my mom with a plate of you know potatoes and lasagna and, and veg. And, and I think we all are wise enough not to say no to my mother's to have a plate of food. For me. So I'm like, right, I guess I'm having lasagna. And so when that was finished, it was another lasagna. It was my fourth, fifth coffee today. It's like, you won't, you have like, I had to drive another hour to get back to claim for the next run. And I, I put that kind of stuff on myself because I, I wanted to make it as, mo- as enjoyable as I could which is probably yeah. goes against what a goggles challenge is, but to run as many different people as they could and to make an event of it, uh, to, to have those things. Like you could just go outside, do a, a, a your 6K loop, and then, well, a little over 6K loop, four, mile loop, four miles anyway, and come back and do that 12 times you be done with it. But I, like, I knew this could be a one and done. I wanted to make the most of it. And speaking of running different people, because I have to give out to someone that could be listening right now, and that's Dara. So Dara, who, who the bar away, uh, he's been on the podcast a couple of times. He ran with us on the second night, 12 o'clock, came all the way up, did the run, came back, and he 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 bombed it so much so like afterwards. I was looking back at the blog prepared for this podcast, and uh two things stick out. One is that you were like, Oh, he dragged you on that one. I was like, What could drag me on nothing? I could do this. <laughs> Actually, a third thing, he that's he told me that day about the eco eco trail, the 80k, and I was like, I'm signing up for that, and I ended up doing it in September. So only for that run with him, I wouldn't have done that eco trail. So thank you very much, Dara, for that. But thank you very much for this very next thing as well. Do you remember the hang chad? Hang chad, yes. Hang yes, chad. yes. So a hang chad was doing I, I can't remember exactly where it came from and stuff. I know it, something to do with the states. I should have looked up before the podcast, but anyway, it was just doing that little bit more at the end of the run. So if I had done a 4.3 mile run. For the all 12 runs, I would have done two marathons in two days. So he told me that when I was in the Saturday night and I was like halfway through it. And now 
I'd already known when I was going to get my, last, my, my, my 13 run in because you'd already started to stir the pot in the first one in the first <laughs> track. You were like, well, I was extra four miles. I mean, like, if you're going to do it, you do it. You do two marathons in two days. I was like, look, in the back of my mind, I wasn't saying to you, I was like, if I feel good at the 11th run, which I thankfully did, I was like, I'll squeeze another one in. And then when I meet people for the last run, I'm going to have all this energy. There's no way I'm going to fail the last run because it's just take your time on your toes, pretty much just get through it. And I was thankfully a little bit faster than that, but I knew if I got that last run, I'd be grand. So I had to sneak in that extra run. <laughs> I remember you, you came me afterwards to fight and you're like, ah, you didn't quite do two marathons, did you? And I was like, that's the third time you said that to me. And that's when I showed you the Strava. You're like, ah, good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just nice now I can get to you so easily. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's the little things like, yeah, yeah. You, you did a 4448, so what? You didn't do 52 points two miles <laughs> yeah or whatever I know, it is for um, full marathon but and, and that's one thing as well like you to remind people that are doing it like it is no small feat it's two marathons no. just shy of two marathons in two days like it is punishment on the body um but it is the best entrance into endurance endurance yes. because you are getting the chance to rest your teach you well you will learn how to recover quickly you will learn to appreciate sleep you will learn to appreciate food and you will really learn to appreciate support and that's one thing you did really well like you it was a, a very much a three-pronged approach that you had this motivation because you were meeting with people yeah. you had nutrition whether you wanted it or not it was there <laughs> yeah. and you know like would your energy levels be different if you were just on your granola bar and lucas diet you'd 100%. probably be under pressure you know like and it's it was all the little key things that come together for you to do it and it was a good indication uh for me even when you look at some of the endurance things what i need to be eating and i learned a lot from your four by 48 when i went to do the cycle um from mizzen to mallet hmm. and i was like oh i need a lot of food and i need it in serious quantities and easily digestible and you know and i learned a lot from watching what you did and stuff so um yeah there's a lot to be gained from it and, and those who are thinking about getting into a marathon and stuff okay you might have missed about this year and now i'm sure a lot of people listening to this have done a marathon or two but if you're thinking of going into the ultra side of things it's definitely a, a fantastic little peak it, it's 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 mm -hmm. a free open to the door or would you agree with me there it's, it's oh 100 like little... yeah because it puts in your mind like straight away i'm like i've done two marathons two days now granted it was broken up but it was such a platform to go okay now an 80k in, in the eco trail seems possible and the only real way it does is because I've, I've got something to build towards that which was this like so it, i just felt like what else can i do after doing this like it's such a platform to keep building and and, and the support i'm sure you'll agree with doing man, man to mizzen or mizzen the man and head that having people around you constantly just it, it's a superpower in itself just because it helps push you so much more how i don't like i don't 4448 by myself me granola me lucas aids not talked or seen anyone went out all the time and did it Maybe I would have done it. Maybe I wouldn't have done it. I don't know. But it, it makes the challenge to me so much better. And some people might be listening. Like, that's, that should be a challenge to self. Go out there yourself. I'm like, eh, God goes runs of people and he does it. So <laughs> I'm all right yeah. with that. <laughs> ah, look, it's it's nice to be inclusive. And, and it's what mm. we've said since day one when we started the podcast with four of us trying to do a marathon. It was it was a shared experience because yeah. It's great doing all these things. It's like, like go back to the skiing last week. Like I ski down when I left the gang and I was going home on my own. So it wasn't as fun going down the hill on my own. It wasn't as yeah. nice seeing like Katie or Dad, you know, weaving down the hill in front of me and me trying to keep up with them and trying to look for the color of the jackets. And you know, like when you do on your own, like what have you done? It's kind yeah. of great. Say different kind of analogies. Like if a bear shits in the wood, did you really take care or not? Like it's like you know when you don't do these things with people what what are you doing like or or you know like and you included people in it and everyone has an invested interest in it and mm. you don't want to let them down either like there's there's so much to it there's um and there's a little bit of magic to that there is yeah. there's so much more of a, the shared a magic to the shared experience session. Yeah. And that's like, well, I know we mentioned it and we, we, we kind of haven't mentioned it over the last years, the military side, I kind of just kept that side out of it. I was like, well, and that's why they call the comrades, like, because you go through this shared experience of terrible mm -hmm. and then you're kind of like, 
oh, that was wasn't too bad. Sure, we're all there together, you know, and that's you the rose tinted glasses come on, and that's why we do a marathon every year. So it mm-hmm. there's there's something there that has been there forever and through shared experiences and you know that that feeling of going through stuff together. And it's just that you did it perfectly, I think. And although I am a big fan of even my own training, like I will go into the hurt locker on my own on certain days because you have to go there, you have to have that fight oh, yeah. with the brain. But like a challenge or an event is supposed to be a shared experience. You're supposed to see the joy on people's faces when they cross the finish line or get the medal or or the suffering, you know, like and, and some people are having a bad day. But yeah. like that's why I had the the 4 a.m. was the one where I wanted that. Okay, here's your, your taste of suffering. Here's when it's when in theory it's at its absolute roughest because there's no one there to drag you out of the bed at four o'clock. You have to get up and, and make sure you do it. But even still, I still had to strive. I still had to post some stuff there. Like So that accountability of other people there w- 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 was there, even though it was technically run by myself. Like I knew people were looking at the stories and the posts and stuff, be like, oh, did he actually get up at four o'clock? Not, not in that kind of way. Did he actually get up? But I just seen, oh, yeah, I was. Before, you, actually, you were. <laughs> I just said, that prick, I have to make sure I do it for him. <laughs> but I will say, while, while it's great afterwards, the session and talking to people and, you know, having a few drinks with the pizzas and all the rest, um, wasn't that great for recovery. I did suffer the next couple of days uh, sleep pattern. I, I, I can't remember the details of it now. But I do remember talking to people that week being like, my sleep wasn't there. Like, it was so tough to sleep at night that it was just, I kept waking up every two, three hours, that burst of energy, being like, I have to go do something. I was like, nah, it's, it's one o'clock in the morning, pal. You need to go to bed for four hours for your back up for work. Like, that was, that was a struggle afterwards, re- readjusting, even though it was only two days. But it just shows you the adaptability of the body. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like, three days, the same with skiing, like, three days, bit of a break, and then I was raring to go every day, you know, like it was, and then come three o'clock, I was tired because I knew the day was done. The, the body knew, okay, I'll give him this because this is what he's asked for the last few days. And then what do you mean you don't want it now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're up, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's get into it. And it, it is amazing. And it happened to me on Mizzen Tamalan. Well, I did the, the half marathon on the Saturday, which was in Dingle. I hadn't ran in ages and I did like one of the, highest climbing half marathons i'd ever done and i was just like oh that was stupid and then um i got on a bike for 750 kilometers but the first day was over the cork and Kerry mountains and i was like oh this was a really bad idea mm-hmm. but come day three and four my body started to adapt yes it carried aches yes it carries pains but i just got stronger as the week went on and and it is different strokes for different folks um like i've I'm quite miserable for the first couple of days. I'm actually probably not nice to be around. And then on the other end of the scale, I keep getting stronger while other people start getting more tired. Mm. And then I'm even worse to be around because I'm like, come on, this is great. Singing songs, frozen. You would want to build a snowman. You name it, the bare necessities. And everyone's like, would you, would you just leave me alone, please? <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I love it. I and, poked um, the bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, and, that, and that's just how I always... Uh, kind of adapt to things i'm not the quickest starter uh but i'm guaranteed to be stronger at the finish and that and that's one thing your body kind of proved and and again as we said it's a lesson into endurance you'll you'll see what your body is going to do at certain points and then you can tailor a few things to it you can you can start to think about a training plan you know you can start to think about nutrition you can start to think about where am i going to suffer or, or where would the wall be for me at this point and my calf started to niggle after run four. So now you're looking at, right, how many kilometers was that in? And what am I doing wrong as I get to certain points? Or is it the yeah. pace that's wrong? Is it the shoes that's wrong? So there's a lot to be gained from it. It's, it is a fantastic free, in my own opinion. You've done it, Sean. I only I'd just agree with 100%. It. But it's a, it's a fantastic free exposure into, into where things may or may not go wrong for you on certain days or certain events you want to do. And if you want to encourage a few people to get out there and do a, f- a four mile or just over the five, 6.4 or 6.5 kilometers or there, thereabouts, mm. um, it can be a good goal for someone to just run with you at midnight. You know, it can be, it can be a great inclusive thing and they're encouraged because they're like, well, you're after doing 10 of these and yeah. I'm only doing one with you and I'm already wrecked, you know, and, but it's still fantastic that they take part in these kind of things. There's something about, and I, I don't know the exact word for it. Like, so I remember that the second night, 
uh, it was a Saturday night, obviously, um, four o'clock in the morning going for a run. And I had to drive out to kill from here because there's no lights or anything here. If a car comes around the corner on these roads, I'm a goner. No matter what kind of way I'm lit up or anything like that. So driving out towards Kill, which is probably the, the nearest little town to, to where I am, and uh, going for the run and like just seeing a guy hopping in a taxi at four o'clock in the morning and just being that idiot that's going for a run. Like it, it, it it's just it's a weird mind kind of thing. And like, oh man, I'm doing something that that, that would that's just completely out of the ordinary here because I'm supposed to be out on a Saturday night having a few drinks and coming back and all the rest. I look here, look, I mean, next Saturday night, we're going to be at the three, four o'clock in the morning. So I'm not saying I'm better than that person for going running when they're not. I'm just saying more so that it's just, that kind of switches on. That kind of got, that gives you that extra little push being like, I'm doing something here and not a lot of people are doing it. I'm getting out of my own comfort zone to do something. And that's the great thing with the challenge. Like you need, yes, you need to have the miles and legs beforehand. The nutrition is great to have beforehand. The preparation, which I haven't really talked too much about in the podcast, especially with this week is like, I had my clothes laid out. I knew what, what t-shirt, what shorts, jocks, box, uh, like socks, everything for the 12 runs. They were all laid out when I needed the lights for this run where I needed gloves and different hats for this run. It was nighttime, whatever. Like I knew what I was wearing for each one of the runs. I knew what I was wearing for the session afterwards in the pub. Like I had, <laughs> like it was the most prepared I had ever been. Um, so like while all that is important, I think that the biggest challenge is is, is the mind. Is just that kind of can I keep going? Because the body, like you said, the body is adaptable. The, like you, you can drag the body along, do things it doesn't want to do, providing you've got somewhat of a base. Like if you're just sitting there in the podcast, like listen to this podcast and be like, I haven't ran at all. Well, I do the challenge this weekend. Probably wouldn't recommend it to you. Your legs yeah. are going to be feeling for weeks and months afterwards. That's not the smartest idea. But like if you've done a good bit of running up until now and you're averaging like 80, 100 kilometer mile, I'm sorry, 100 kilometer months very very doable because i think it was around the 100 kilometer a month pr- around that stage for the january yeah. february when I, went, when I went to dinner and it is it's one of those things that it's it's early in the year like so you don't mm. even really okay you got back into training in january and i've seen a lot of people running around and claim is where i'm living now that uh they're out there running and i'm i'm looking at the same faces and i'm feeling bad because i'm like oh i should be out running yeah um, and I'm like, I can't go on a podcast and not be around my town running. But I, hate, I, I actually hate running in the town. This is this is the bit that gets me. I'd rather be in a dark forest with a head torch than I would dodging mm. cars and dogs and prams. And a lot of people that. are that way. Yeah, I don't. I really don't enjoy it at all. Um, and I admire people that can do it. It's just not for me. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's if you have been doing it, it's definitely doable. It is definitely doable. Yeah. And and don't be put off by the fact that it's two marathons in two days it's it's not it's a 6.5k run a few times a day yeah i mean yeah. Like two marathons two days usually when you say that like you and you've done one marathon before going oh god two two days is, is a nightmare one it's broke up so much you got so much food but two you're running nowhere near the pace is the pace the killer it's not the distance it's the going yeah. out as hard as you can so most of my runs apart from that that run the saturday the second night i got taken i did a 35 minute uh 6.5k and um, most of them were anywhere between the 40 and 50 minute mark and i didn't care for time because there wasn't much difference in five and ten minutes in terms of rest and recovery before the, like i still had three hours before the next one granted sometime only had one and a half or two if i was driving and stuff like that but the, like every session wasn't in my drive and stuff so it's not a sleep challenge you'll have to stay awake for all 48 hours i wouldn't recommend that at, but at the same time, it's not a how fast they got these runs in. It's just go out and, and do it. And um, I would thoroughly recommend it. Like I said, it's it's up there one of the best challenges I've I've ever done. And um, I look back on it with so much nostalgia and really really enjoyed that time doing it. Don't know if I'd do it again. It has to be for a good reason. But if someone was like, hey, Sean, you know, I've, I've got this challenge coming up and someone around here was like, yeah, I'd pop down and do one or two runs, which are absolutely no bother. I'm like, put my services out there right now do it. Unless it's your <laughs> kind of 30 where I have to go to a, to, to a pub and drink a few beers on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, it is, it is a great one. It is, it is a really good one. It's something that, yeah, I kind of I've been there and done that in different mm. aspects, and it just doesn't interest me. Like, and not so that I, I I just wouldn't feel the same challenge you felt because it already felt stuff like that, you know. Like, mm. and it's just 
Um, but it is still a fantastic achievement, and oh, maybe I'm just being soft, but <laughs> I don't know. But no, but you've it. done overnight stuff, like you, you, yeah. you know, you do 24 hour shifts and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that's that that mental thing has nothing to you. Whereas to me, it was like, like I I had no idea how I'd react at those 4 a.m. runs, and then going yeah. at 8 a.m. and heading back to claim and, and seeing people I work with and seeing what kind of mood and stuff I'd be in because. I like to think I'm a, I'm a happy person to be around most of the time. Like I know I have some of my early morning moments when I'm around people, like I need a coffee first before I do anything. But like for the most part, I like to think I am. So I was afraid of being snappy at people or, or just not being myself and just being, you know, just, just being like, not the curse in the podcast, but just being an arsehole. I didn't want to be one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, sure I, I have the people anyway, but in terms, like I didn't want to be kind of that, that, that snappy kind of arsehole yeah. people. So yeah. I, I was, I was genuinely worried about that, but, Thankfully, I handled. I think I handled it well. Um, I, I really enjoy the weekend. So if you are doing it this week, absolute best luck to you. Feel free to hit us up on the Instagram if you've got any questions that we've not addressed during this podcast. We'd be more than happy to help you out on that one, uh, myself or Eric, because you've done a lot of training as well on, on very little sleep. 